Okay, good morning and welcome back to a new week here on the Aussie Lawn. Now, last week I quickly touched on uh, the discovery of some disease in this front lawn that crept up. Um, and I've put it down to some dollar spot. So today's video is going to be all about dollar spot, uh, what the signs are, what to look for, and how did this actually get away on me? And we'll start with, with that. Because of this time of year and... Uh, my work commitments basically have me leave in the dark and come home in the dark. So I don't see a lot of what's going on here until uh, my day's off. And by that stage, sometimes it's possible that things just get away. And uh, that's what we've got in this situation. But anyway, today, just looking around here, I've noticed that there's not quite as much of that mycelium. And that is those little spiderweb-like um, things that, you, that we'll show you in a minute that are forming on top of the, uh, of the grass canopy. Uh, but anyway, I'll spin that around, we'll have a look, we'll try and find some of that mycelium and uh, yeah, we'll talk about what causes it, What sorry, well, what causes dollar spot and uh, what we're going to treat it with. And, okay, so uh, as you can see here, this is, uh, this is some mycelium and basically when you get up close, it just looks like uh, little spiderwebs across the surface and that is a prime indicator of, uh, of dollar spot. So look, it doesn't discriminate at all. You can see it even, it'll even form on some bare areas. So uh, yeah, no, this is this is well and truly uh, dollar spot and it's gonna need to be treated. <laughs> when we look back this way into the sunshine, you can actually see just how much uh, there is, it actually shines it up a little bit better so we can get a fair idea. Now there's probably not quite as much of that spiderweb mycelium mycelium as there was the other day but hey we're still going to treat it okay so let's have a quick just to just have a quick overview uh, of dollar spot just the basic sort of things and then this afternoon I'm going to spray this and then I'll do a bit of a voiceover when I'm spraying to go into a bit of in-depth stuff so I'll drag out my old uh, TAFE notes or tech notes from when I was apprentice. I've stood all those notes there. It's about a pile this thick of, of, of uh, green keeping information. And I'll just go through, I'll just pick out some bits and pieces. It'll rejog my memory as well. Pick out some bits and pieces and, and I'll share that information with you during the voiceover. Look, basically for now though, dollar spot. It is a fungus that sort of lives and survives in the soil and just sits there waiting, waiting, waiting for the right occasion or the right situation, climatic, etc., to, uh, I guess, come to life, basically. Okay, so this stuff can pop up overnight. Um, sort of, you know, nothing one day and there it is the next. And that's sort of what happened with me. I, I, I don't get to see uh, this yard in the daylight when I'm at work. I, I leave in the dark, I get home in the dark, so I don't get to see... I don't get to see what happens during the day, so it's only my days off that I get the chance to have a walk around and, and, and see what's been happening. Some of the things that you can actually do yourself, as in cultural control, so if you want to avoid the spraying, and, and that's probably the best way is to avoid spraying, but there are occasions like this one where, where the spraying is, is probably a, um, a reasonable option, and that is uh, having low levels of nitrogen can also uh, help this situation. So by adding a higher nitrogen fertilizer to your lawn, um, can help control this sort of stuff. Autumn and spring, uh, just the way our seasons roll here, are more ideal for this disease, this fungus, because what happens is we get nice cool evenings, we get mild nice days like this one this morning here, but we get the dewy mornings as well. Now, having just come out of a drought uh, and getting reasonably regular rain, I haven't had to irrigate this lawn apart from fertilizer really since the end of, end of summer, so that's great. Uh, so that's sort of probably what's led this to uh, become a bit of a thing for me now. Um, now look, it does affect a, a number of turf varieties. It's going to affect obviously your cool season stuff. So particularly bent grass, the creeping bent grasses are very susceptible to uh, dollar spot. Your fescues, so yeah, your tall fescues, your chewing fescues, particularly the creeping red fescue, the creeping varieties. Um, Queensland blue cooch for the warm season, that's also susceptible. Green cooch clearly, um, kaikyu and, and, and things like that. Finally though, look, it's worth noting that you can and you can spread this from, from mower, from lawn to lawn. So if you get an outbreak on your front lawn and you're mowing this and then you take your mower around the back, there's every chance that that's going to spread to the back lawn too. So just keep that in mind. If you're going to spray the front, you might as well be spraying the back as well, simply because if you've been mowing with the same mower or transporting it, walking, etc., uh, it's going to it's going to carry that uh, carry that fungus with it. 
Okay, let me just quickly show you a timeline of photographs that I put together just to show the progress of this disease. Now, the first picture you're looking at here, uh, now I took that on the 13th of June and that was after the dew had lifted on the first morning I noticed that I had a serious issue. Now let's move on five days later. So we're now at the 18th of June and you can start to see a big difference. We've lost a bit of color, we've got some scarring and um, yeah, I hadn't still sprayed at that stage. It was actually the same day. So I'd, this was the day that I sprayed on the um, 18th of June. On this next photo, you can see this is just as the dew is lifting. So this is just before I started to spray. And you can see you've got down the bottom left-hand corner, you can see the scarring there of the, uh, the disease taking hold. But up the back corner of the photo, you can see some mycelium there, the uh, little spiderweb-like material sitting on the surface. Um, yeah, so that was just before I was going to spray. This picture is actually a pretty good photo because it shows you on the left the mycelium spiderweb-like uh, material, and then just to the right, down lower slightly, you'll notice some yellowing of the uh, of the cooch grass, and that is the next stage. That is the actual dollar spot starting to form. And in the next slide, you'll see what it looks like in scale. Okay, finally, this one, this photo here is fairly self-explanatory. So this actually gives you a fairly good indication of how Dollar Spot gets its name. So I've put a dollar coin there on the lawn and just on above on the left hand side you can see a circular like patch that sort of resembles the shape and the size of the, the dollar coin. So that's the disease in its final, final stage. Okay so today I'm going to apply a fungicide called Chief Aquaflow and it's a broad spectrum fungicide and it'll cover uh, brown patch, fusarium patch, spring dead spot, Helmo and the dollar spot that we're chasing today. Oh no! Now, a few things to point out with this for best results. Um, you want to use the minimum amount of water to get over your area as possible using a medium sized spray nozzle. So, medium droplet spray nozzle. Now, I'm going to throw this out at the upper rate. So, that's 90 mils per 100 square meters of turf. Now, a tip for this, when you're applying this stuff, to get the best results, even coverage is the key to good disease control. So I always try to do everything I do twice. So, I, well, go over it twice. So go over it one way, then go over it another way. And that's going to give you the best chance of the uh, even coverage that we're chasing. Now, look, this stuff will work really rapidly in the turf and... One of the things to take away from this is in low nutrient situations like this front lawn, this is going to be lower in nutrients and that's one of the reasons this dollar spot actually crept in is because the, the nutrient levels dropped off because I hadn't been feeding it and there was a reason for that. You're going to see some yellowing or some color loss in the turf and that's what I'm going to expect to see here in the coming weeks. I'm going to lose some color. Now, ways around this. Ideally for best practice, probably I should have fertilized and the lead up to this, but then we've saying that I probably wouldn't have got the dollar spot to start with. And the reason I hadn't been doing that is because I've been running that plant doctor trial on the putting green at the back. I wanted a bit of a control to see how much benefit there was to using those products through the winter. And I was leaving the front lawn untouched. So I could say, well, look, this is, yeah, this is the benefit. I have actually done one liquid fertilizer application on that front lawn, but that's all I've done. Probably in the very near future, I'm going to look at an other application just to put a little bit of nutrient into that without promoting too much leaf growth or pushing or trying to push too much leaf growth at this time of year. Now, some of the benefits of using this herbicide, sorry, using this fungicide, it's a non-scheduled chemical. So that basically means you can use it in and around public areas and there's no re-entry restrictions in other words there's not a period of time where you've got to keep off it for example um, it's a water-based formulation so it provides efficient movement in the soil profile and it's very effective against root-borne pathogens so it can work on leaf-borne stuff and and some and some soil-borne um, things as well now it does work on all stages of the disease life cycle so it's going to work for you regardless of where that disease growth is at now you will notice that I am actually using full spray protection and that's something you should really adopt too because look, although it's just I've just finished saying it's a non-scheduled chemical and you know re-entry, there's no restrictions, etc. Look, yeah, you might walk around the, the yard looking like a clown or looking like you've just landed from Mars, but 
if it's going to keep you safe, just just do it. What, who cares what people think? It's your own health and safety, and you don't want to end up sick or, you know, worst case scenario. So look, you know, throw that protective gear on and uh, do it right. Look after yourself. Look after your family, and then everybody gets to enjoy the uh, the nice turf at the end of the day. Right, so we're going to forward track now eight days, and this is actually Friday before video goes live uh, tomorrow morning. And we can see that there's been a reduction in colour as a result of the application of uh, Chief Aquaflow, and there is some damage or scarring of the uh, turf from Dollar Spot disease. The good news is, though, there is no more mycelium present, so the uh, although the areas that are damaged won't re won't sort of repair I guess without assistance of fertilizer and stuff especially at this time of year um, it's good to know that we're not going to get at this stage anymore so let's just have a little look up close at some of the damage okay so you can see it really took no prisoners at all so we've got uh, the patches actually got quite large so I've got one here uh, and all around you can see there's just scarring from the from the infection or from the disease. Um, we move into the shade where it's still a bit dewy and you'll see uh, again uh, the scarring results but no new mycelium. Okay so I've put this together over obviously a couple of weeks just to sort of give you from early stages through to treatment through to uh, outcome and results and it's been very interesting to find out probably more so in the last few days uh, that there's quite a few people commenting on, on uh, Australian Lawn Fanatics Facebook page etc about unusual brown patches on their lawn and uh, most of those cases to me look like they're dollar spot so obviously uh, why is this happening and I would strongly uh, I'd strongly suggest that as we've come out of the drought um, conditions have become very favourable for this disease and we've had more regular rainfall and this this uh, this disease has probably been lying dormant waiting for basically a time such as this to unleash its goodness on everybody uh, so with a bit of luck this video reaches the people with the disease and it gives them uh, some ideas on what they're dealing with how to counteract it and uh, all that sort of caper anyway look I'm gonna sign off for now uh, thank you very much for watching have a great weekend and we'll see you next time on the Aussie lawn